A soldier, in a panic, ran out into a highway in Tennessee, where he was run over multiple times. Police say it was a tragic accident, while the family insists that they could be covering up much more. Today's story takes place in Pleasant View, a small town located near Nashville, Tennessee. On October 15th of 2016, a disoriented soldier from nearby Fort Campbell broke into a flower shop, ran out, and was struck by not one, not two, but three different cars and lost his life. The details surrounding what led to him ending up in the middle of the highway are hazy at best, and certainly not agreed upon. The subject of this case was named Austin McGill, a 21-year-old E-4 specialist in the Army from Connecticut, a proud member of the 101st Airborne. He had been stationed at nearby Fort Campbell for about 17 months. He loved his job and had a girlfriend that he was planning on proposing to soon. One faithful Friday night at about 7.30 p.m., Austin attended a party along with some of his friends and about 30 other people, some soldiers, some locals from the town. The party was held at the home of a girl whose parents were out of town, and a lot of underage drinking was taking place. It was said that Austin himself had been drinking heavily, with at least two hard drinks, and one party goater even reported that he had been snorting some Percocet, that he had received after a recent wisdom tooth surgery. That same person later saw him lying in the driveway of the home, saying that he was just chilling. During the party, there was a little bit of tension between the soldiers and the local guys. Austin texted his girlfriend, if my friends need me, I will jump in and help if something happens. I will jump in and defend my friends. At some point, he separated from his friends and left the party on his own, on foot. His friends searched the property at around 11.30 p.m., calling for him, but got no response. At some point, Austin took some photos on his cell phone. From the angle of the photos, it appears as if he was lying on the ground as headlights were approaching him. After this, he fled and ended up deep in the woods. While running through the forest, he called 911. He seemed scared, saying, I have a 911 emergency. Please, help me please. A bit after 3 a.m., Austin broke into Pleasant View Nursery and Florist, a local flower shop. He broke in through a back window that had recently been broken and replaced with cardboard and began to vandalize the location, reportedly throwing over shelves loaded with jam and jelly. He ate some pizza, broke some jars, pulled out a cash register and card reader, and used the bathroom. While Austin was still in the nursery, he began frantically calling the police. He would make several long, rambling phone calls before abruptly hanging up. 911, location here. Help me, help me, help me, please. Notably, in one call, he mentioned that someone had been stalking him. It feels like they want to kidnap me. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not insane. They just want to kidnap me. These people are crazy. I swear to God, these people are crazy. I swear to God. He told the operator, they're stalking me right now. I swear to God. I walked into the woods. People wanted to stalk. Oh my God, never mind. Before hanging up once more. In his final call at around 3.39 a.m., his tone had completely changed and it seemed like everything was okay. Let me get you some help. No. No, no, no. Okay, well, you called 911, sir, and you, you sounded genuinely scared. No, I'm fine now. All right. Um, I found everyone. I'm fine now. And you know, all right? His speech was slurred, and he seemed agitated and disoriented. He quickly fled the flower shop, leaving both his cell phone and his wallet behind, likely in a panic. After some time running down the road, he ended up on Highway 41A. He jumped out into the road, waving for help, when he was struck by a car. It was said that he came out so suddenly that there was no way that the 18-year-old driver could have avoided him. The driver pulled over to call 911. She told them that he had appeared suddenly, jumping right out in front of her car in the dark. While she was on the phone with police, Austin was then hit by another car. He didn't make it passing away at the scene almost instantly. The second car that struck him didn't stop, and the driver was not found. The owners of the flower shop returned to find the place completely ransacked. They closed the shop for the morning, but reopened again around noon. 
From the get-go, local police, notably Sheriff Breedlove, noted that the case was bizarre. The Tennessee Highway Patrol were called in to investigate. No charges were placed against the 18-year-old driver who originally hit Austin, as she was found to be completely without fault. Police gathered the details at hand and began to craft their story about what they believe happened that night. They said that, while out of his mind, drunk and high on Percocets, Austin had been hallucinating. He then broke into the nursery, trashed the place, and ended up being swarmed by bees in the process, saying that he reported the bees throughout his phone calls to 911. Then, while running from the bees, he made his way out into the highway where he was struck by the vehicles. His autopsy showed that he had a blood alcohol level of .304, about four times the legal limit. They also claimed that he had tested positive for opiates. Right away, very apparent holes began to form in the story. One major notable factor is that there weren't any bees or even anything similar to bees, such as wasps or hornets being kept at the florist. I must note that both the articles and the police reports from this time kind of flip-flop back and forth on whether they're bees or wasps, and uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to cover both angles. There was one small wasp nest outside in the back, but wasps are inactive at night and were unlikely to have chased him. However, the police closed the case. It was ruled as an accident. Now, the family finding all of this... Suspicious as hell, to say the least, ordered that the case be reopened and more closely examined. They wanted to find out what really happened that night, so they hired their own private investigator to see what he could gather. The investigator was able to get a hold of the autopsy reports. Austin's autopsy noted that he had never been stung by a wasp or a bee. It was also found that there was no phone call reporting any bees either. Police also initially pushed that he had been overusing opiates before the accident as well, but the autopsy found that, although he did have them in his system, he did not have abnormally high levels of them, implying that he had only been taking the amount prescribed. There was also no pizza in his stomach, showing that he had not eaten inside the nursery after all. Uh, there was no evidence collected at the nursery either, no fingerprints, no DNA, they kind of just left it as it was, and the owners picked up later. A second private investigator had been hired as well, who then discovered something major that had never been revealed to the public. There was a third car that struck Austin after the first two that also fled the scene and was reportedly never found. Immediately, the family demanded answers and called for the case to be reopened, as they now had ample evidence that something fishy was afoot, to say the least. Austin's mother, Kimberly Reed, has made several trips down from Connecticut to try and help solve this case. She firmly believes that someone had been chasing her son, to the extent that she's offering a $15,000 reward for any information that may lead to a suspect being arrested. The family filed a civil suit against the driver who originally hit Austin, along with the John and Jane Doe's who hit him after that. The suit claimed that the driver had admitted to have been speeding, was driving without insurance, failed to give assistance, and was driving under the influence. Police have defended the driver, though, saying that she was not intoxicated and that she had fully cooperated with law enforcement. A suit was also filed against the host of the party that Austin attended, along with her parents, saying that the parents failed to keep an eye on what was going on in their own home, and that the host should have watched the party goers more closely, given that they had clearly consumed far too much alcohol and that she should have done more to find Austin after he wandered off alone. The family spoke to the media, saying, The Cheatham County Sheriff's Department were so quickly to say just hours after his death that he was a drunk, hallucinating, drugged-up soldier. He was certainly none of those things. He was a trained Army specialist, not scared of anything that never asked for help. Something happened that night to force him to call 911, they said in the release. Now, Sheriff Breedlove did admit that, initially at least, there were indications of a chase. He had indeed, without a doubt, mentioned being chased and stalked throughout many of his phone calls to the police. He was winded and panicked in those calls as well, making his fear seem genuine. However, he said that he was fine and hung up. There was also no physical evidence of a chase to be found, according to the police. 
The family and friends of the family say that police are refusing to even look into the new details being discovered surrounding the case. They claim that the police are merely picking and choosing what details they want to use to close the case. The family hired a forensic lab to analyze Austin's phone calls. They determined that there were other people around him when he made his calls to police, saying, It is clear that there were other individuals in close enough proximity to the caller to be picked up by his phone's microphone. From the analysis, they concluded that Austin had been being chased by two males. Most of the voices in the background were unintelligible, aside from two chilling lines, the first being a male voice saying, he's over here, and one more voice at the very end of the phone call saying, tell her, referring to the female 911 operator. The men were close enough to Austin to be able to hear that the operator was a woman. Now, the police have since said that the additional voices on the call could simply be feedback from the 911 call itself and that there is no concrete evidence that Austin was actually being chased. The private investigators discovered that the third driver who hit Austin had, very suspiciously, major family ties to law enforcement. In response to this allegation, Cheatham County investigator Jeff Landis told the media over the phone that they had interviewed that third driver and concluded he was not involved. In response to all of this, Sheriff Reed Love has said that he does sympathize with the family. I cannot imagine the heart-wrenching pain any parent has to go through when they lose a child, he said. As an experienced death investigator, I always kept this in mind that this is someone's child, no matter how old. However, he did also go on to say, Sometimes family members find it hard to accept the facts and feel the need to blame others, including law enforcement, if those facts shed an opposing light on the victim. So in recap, we have two stories here. The first story from the police is that while drunk and high, Austin wandered off from a party, broke into a florist, disturbed a wasp nest, and was chased by those wasps out into the highway where he was hit by a car, and then another. A notably strange accident, but an accident nonetheless, likely caused by Austin's extreme intoxication. On the other hand, we have the story from the family and private investigators that, after leaving the party, Austin was chased down by two males, called the police, but eventually chose not to disclose any information to them about what was happening, and fled, where he was then hit by three cars, with the third car being very notably tied to law enforcement. Now, these are obviously two very different accounts on what may have happened. The police don't really find any merit in the new information discovered by the private investigators. Therefore, nobody's really coming to an agreement on this. Many online theorists, at least, believe that Austin was being chased by someone connected to law enforcement, leaving him unable to tell the police who exactly was chasing him when he contacted them and causing him to realize that it may be best to end the call and not disclose anything to them at all. Rather than receive help from the police, he chose to run, where he was there hit by another two cars, with the third car being driven by someone very close to law enforcement, who ran him over one more time to make sure he was finished off. To this day, Austin's mother has many sleepless nights researching the case online. No one knows that at home in the middle of the night when my family's sleeping that I'm up and I'm dry heaving and I'm crying and I'm begging and I'm just you know, online investigating this whole thing myself. They will never stop pursuing the case and even plan to add more defendants to the civil suit. The lead detective on the case, Jeff Landis, is no longer with the Cheatham County Sheriff's Department. He resigned after two of his investigators were questioned by the courts. Later, the district attorney, Ray Crouch, was asked if he thought he would be able to trust Detective Landis with the case, to which he replied, I would have to say no. I have some real issues of the credibility of Mr. Landis, said Judge David Wolf. Sheriff Breedlove has decided not to run for office again in 2021. Needless to say, this is a very confusing case with a lot of conflicting statements, conflicting evidence, and it gets complicated. I'm interested to hear what you think happened, so do let me know in the comments. I haven't really seen this case discussed too often, so if anything, I guess it might be good to kind of raise some awareness. So thank you again for watching, everyone. If you found it interesting, please leave a like, and if you want to see more interesting kind of unknown cases, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.